What is up guys? Today we have a quick little video for you. As you all know already, I have an S65 AMG Coupe, but we have today that you can also buy, which is the S63 Coupe. And you know what? Maybe I, I'm not sure. Maybe I bought the wrong car. Uh, we'll try to figure that out in today's upload. Now, while most of the differences between the two models are very, very small, at least when it comes to the visuals, like on the fender here, we have a V8 by turbo badge instead of a V12 by turbo badge. Now, the grills are also different between an S63 and an S65. This car, however, has had a, a slight little facelift upgrade here because this is the Panamericana grill that became available for the 2018 model year when they did the facelift. This is indeed a 2016. So the original grill would look like this. And one big difference is that an S65 has an S65 specific grill. So for a trained eye, you know right away uh, if it is an S63 or an S65 when you see them on the road, just from the difference in the grill. Now, when we get to the rear, same thing here. There's, there's no real difference except for the badging. So with those minor little differences out of the way, we get to the main difference, and that is obviously the power plant. So an S63 gets a V8 by turbo versus a V12 by turbo in an S65. Now, this model, as we mentioned, is a 2016. So for 2016 and 17, the S63 got the M157, and this is the five and a half liter v8 this produces 577 horsepower and 590 pound feet of torque when the 2018 model year came around and they got the facelift mercedes put the four liter by turbo in uh, the s63 and that engine is basically the one that they used for all their amgs the c63 the e s63 you guys get the point now an s65 a 621 horsepower but a huge difference is the torque number. So the 65 gets 738 pound feet of torque. Now you might think that an S65 should be way quicker than an S63, but that's actually not the case. And we'll explain that here in just a second. And that is because the other big difference between the 63 and the 65 is that the 63 comes with Mercedes's 4Matic, which is their all wheel drive system. An S65, only available in rear wheel drive. So this obviously means that an S63 can launch better than a 65. It doesn't struggle for traction. So if you live in the Northern States, like I do, and you know, we get the slushy winters here, we get a lot of ice, if it's really, really bad. An S63 might be the better model to go with if you wanna daily drive your car all year round. You can't, I mean, you can, but it makes it a little harder to do so in an S65. Now, before we jump in and take it out on the road, if you're in the market for an S63, this one in particular is actually for sale at my friend's LW Automotive. It comes in this uh, pretty rare color, which is ruby black metallic. Check them out if you're interested. I'll link all their stuff in the description below. All right, so for the driving portion, we're uh, gonna do it in POV style, baby. So as you guys can see, this S63 has a different interior from mine. So it has a very light, beautiful interior. It doesn't have the carbon. It's like a, a wood grain, but like a lighter wood grain. I don't know exactly how to describe it. We're just gonna start it up. Sounds good, man. It's not quite the straight pipe V12 that we now have, but for stock, it sounds pretty freaking good. So with it being a 2016, it has a seven speed automatic transmission called the MCT. That's multi-clutch transmission in Mercedes language. From 2018 and on, it got the upgraded nine speed automatic transmission. Now one difference between the pre-facelift that we're in today and uh, the facelifted model is also that a 2018 S63 uh, did come equipped with launch control. S65, no matter what year it was, didn't have launch control and it did not have 4Matic either. So the one that we're in here today does not have launch control but obviously it still has sport mode, has all the same air suspension features that my 65 has. Everything pretty much looks the same except for this one doesn't have the upgraded steering wheel that we got and the interior is obviously different.
I mean, it moves, it does. Um, if this thing had launch control, it would definitely, you know, launch a lot better than the 65. So, and with it being a twin turbo car, it's gonna be very tunable. So uh, you can definitely add a lot of horsepower to this thing. Yeah, I mean, it moves. It definitely moves. Now the 65 is tuned as well. So you do feel a difference in the power delivery and also the power, of course. Yeah, transmission feels the same as well. I, I could be wrong on this part here. So correct me in the comments if I, if I am. Uh, even for the facelifted models of the, the C217 generation of the S-Class, the 65 never got the upgraded transmission. Again, I could be wrong on that, but this uh, MCT, the seven speed, handles torque a lot better than the newer transmission does. Yeah, transmission feels exactly the same. Definitely not any kind of dual clutch quick. It's also not super duper slow. Yeah, and the, the V8, it sounds good at on downshift. It's definitely different from uh, the V12. Typical AMG uh, sound, kind of like comparable to my C63 that I had back in the day. Definitely doesn't have the angry cat downshift sound of the 65. So I'm trying to figure out if uh, the torque, like the power delivery is different and, and lower RPMs. I mean, I, I think at higher speeds, the V12 pulls different. I think the V8 feels slightly uh, just more awake in the lower RPMs until you kind of get up in the rev range. Now, depending on how the car was spec'd originally from the original owner, um, you obviously get all the same features in a 63 uh, as you do in a 65. The amazing Burmester sound system uh, it's probably one of the best ones I've ever experienced. Now, this uh, car is missing the, the magic sky feature. It's also missing uh, night vision. Now, while I use the magic sky feature all the time, because I, I never pretty much close this shade in my car, because I don't need to, I don't really use night vision all that much. So, like, would I miss it a lot? I, I, don't, I don't really know if I were to own this car instead. <laughs> the 63 is a beast just like the oh listen to that downshift just like the 65 now uh, I mean <laughs> if I were to choose I would love to be able to have formatic in the 65 it's not available and that's like one thing that I I will miss during the winter time other than that you know i mean the v12 is more exotic in my opinion that's what i would pick um in my specific car i like the interior better which is why i bought that one i have the red leather and then the the gloss carbon for these parts right here but the all around better car is probably the 63 versus the 65 but i don't really care about all that i like the exoticness of the 65 uh, it's a V12 Mercedes. They don't make them like that anymore. They still make an S63 AMG for the new generation, although they don't make them in a coupe anymore. It's only in a sedan. Um, and it, it's those little uh, reasons that made me pick the 65 over the 63. I just find it weird that they couldn't fit the formatic in the in the V12, but oh well, it is what it is. I can manage, but huge thanks to LW Automotive once again for lending this car to me uh, for a few hours today here so I can make a video for you guys. Again, if you're in the market uh, for a car like this, hit them up. They're great to deal with. Uh, I bought a car here myself. As you guys know, the RS7, and next year I will most likely be picking up something else there. Uh, also. I'll leave all their contact information in the description below and let me know what you guys would pick. Uh, would you pick a 65 or would you pick a 63? I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.